What's going on guys? We've got the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra in our clutches and we've been putting it through its paces for the past week. We've got a camera comparison coming, the full review, but there's a lot to love about this device. So before we get into all that, we're just gonna do a quick five things that I'm loving about the S20 Ultra so far. So the first biggest feature for me is actually not the camera, it's the battery. Battery life is a really important thing when it comes to your using your phone, and especially with a phone this powerful and this big, you're gonna wanna get at least a day out of it, which I'm very happy to report that you easily can. On my heaviest days of usage, I was able to get anywhere from four to six, seven, even eight hours of screen on time with this device. And mind you, this is all with 120 hertz refresh rate enabled. Samsung does admit that the 120 hertz refresh rate will affect battery life, so you can pop down to 60 hertz if you need to, but in order to get through a day, I haven't found it necessary to do that yet. The best part about this is when I did need to charge the device, the included charger, which by the way, unfortunately is not the 45 watt charger, still was able to charge this up in just about an hour every time. The next thing, of course, we have to talk about is those cameras. Now we have a full camera comparison with the iPhone Pixel and a little bit of the Huawei P32 coming up very soon, so keep an eye out for that. But let's just talk about this zoom really quick. So yeah, the zoom on this is nuts. It's even better than I kind of expected it to be, but I still have a little bit of trouble figuring out exactly when or why I would use it. I will say that up to about 30 times zoom, you can get some really cool photos. With that 108 megapixel camera, you'll be able to take 108 megapixel photos, which allows you the ability to crop in really tight on specific details or things that you might not have even seen in the initial photo, but be able to retain a lot of detail on that subject when you crop in because there's just so much data there. But of course, the thing that's really gonna blow your mind are the live crops that you can do with this 48 megapixel, 100 times zoom, 10 times optical zoom telephoto lens. So as a reviewer, of course, I tried to seek out situations where I would need 100 times zoom, and it's pretty hard to find a situation that you're gonna need that. But anywhere in between that zero to maybe 30 times range has some really usable use cases. So the first thing I went to was the Statue of Liberty. And as you can see, it's pretty hard to see from the naked eye at a certain point. I was in Battery Park. And from there, it's kind of a blip on the map. Zoom in to about five times zoom, and you got kind of a nice thing going on here. You got a nice little sunset, and you have a kind of beautiful crop. Zoom in to about 10, and you have a image that you probably couldn't have even foresaw in your head without getting to that point on your phone. This is especially true when you go to somewhere around 25 times zoom, which gets this tight crop that you definitely could not have seen with your naked eye. You can go all the way up to 100 times zoom and really just look at the torch of the Statue of Liberty, but if you can tell from the 1x zoom here, it's not something that you're gonna think you're gonna do because it's so far off from the naked eye, you couldn't even conceive of it. And that's what I started to notice the S20 was doing for me, was changing my perception of what I can take photos of and how. So as is typically the case with Samsung's Galaxy phones, you're gonna get great daytime photos with tons of detail and beautiful colors, but nighttime, while it is improved over the S10, is still not quite at the level that iPhone or Pixel is. We'll go into more depth on that in our full camera comparison, but one other thing that I can say definitely improved is the selfie game on the S20 Ultra. Compared to last year's S10, whether it's selfies or even just regular photos, it doesn't look as overly sharpened, overly beautified, dynamic range has improved, and it just looks a little bit more natural than it has in the past. Samsung's also really bringing the heat when it comes to video capture, and that's gonna be tough for competitors to deal with. Of course, we just heard that the LG V60 ThinQ is gonna have 8K capture as well, but one of the greatest things about this is the video stabilization. So you have the regular stabilization mode, and then you have the super steady mode, which in my opinion should always be enabled. There's been improvements on both, but the super steady mode really gives you that walking on air, gimbal stabilized movement that is so pleasing to look at and so hard to replicate. And the last point I'll make about video is single take. What single take does is allows you to take that nine or 10 second video clip and not have to worry about missing the moment to capture a photo that might have happened in there and pulls it out on its own using AI recognition. And especially for social media, if you wanna take just a quick 10 second video of something somebody's about to do or a quick action shot, then this is probably my favorite way to do it so that I get some cool other content along the way, some short gifable videos and some nice pictures too. And then there's this display. 
the 6.9 inch QHD plus HDR10 plus dynamic AMOLED display that delivers us those punchy deep colors that we are so used to seeing on Samsung and does not disappoint here. So the colors, the resolution, the sheer size of it make watching videos a joy already. Plus the speakers add a really nice immersive experience. Then you have that 120 Hertz refresh rate, which is so pleasing on the eyes. Navigating through the phone, scrolling through lists, seeing different animations, all show a marked difference over the 60 Hertz refresh rate that we've seen on the Galaxy S10 and most phones today. So it's gonna be something that you're gonna notice all the time. Not only that, but with any games that support the 120 Hertz refresh rate, things come out so smooth and responsive, and it's just so much easier on the eyes if you're gaming for hours on end. So it's definitely a huge perk for big gamers. And last but not least is 5G. This is a $1,400 phone, and as we all know, 5G is on the cusp of world domination, so next year or the year after that, when it finally achieves it, you don't want to have to get a new phone after you dropped almost $1,500 on this. Where I was able to find 5G on Verizon's millimeter wave hardware, I was able to get about 2 gigabits per second of download speed. So it's nice to know that with this $1,400 phone, you'll have some of the fastest options for 5G when it gets to your area. Those are my five favorite features about the Galaxy S20 Ultra so far. Make sure you stay tuned for our full review and our in-depth camera comparison. And in the meantime, if you have any questions, make sure you let us know in the comments below. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and make sure you check out digitaltrends.com for our full review and more news on the Galaxy S20 Ultra and many other devices.